Well, greetings, everyone. This is Doc Hatfield, Preacher Man Piper, coming to you again. Uh, sorry I haven't been on here for a while, but, you know, whenever the old body says shut down, then you have to kind of shut down. But now then we're back up and running, and I'd just like to tell you a little story about my grandmother, my, my, my biological grandmother. When I met my grandmother and found out that I was a great-grandson of Devilance Hatfield, uh, there was a church that was nearby, uh, just a town over just a few miles, and they come to me and ask me if I would be willing to help them because uh, their church wasn't running but about 15 and and they didn't have a preacher and couldn't get a preacher and they wanted to know if I'd come and help out till they could find a preacher and I told them I'd be glad to do that. So we went over there and started uh, preaching in that church. Well, it wasn't long till uh, a lot of the people who had been going to that church and had left started coming back. And within just a few few months uh, the church was running like a hundred and so one Saturday morning I said to my grandmother I said let's go visit it and so she went with me and we started going out to the different farms of the different people that was coming because this was a farm community and we would visit somebody and whenever we would get through visiting with them they would give us some food They'd give us some meat and give us some vegetables and fruit and I mean just everything. And we'd go from one farm to another and 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 uh, by the time we got back to the house, uh, we had a whole back seat full and a whole trunk load of food. And uh, so we started taking it all in the house and got it all put out on the kitchen table and of course it just piled the kitchen table up completely full and, uh, and my grandmother she went in and sat down uh, in one of her rocking chairs and she's come to me and and, and uh, she called to me and so I went in there and and uh, with a cup of coffee and sat down and I said well I said uh, what did you think about the, the visitation? I said, uh, uh, I think the people really liked it that we came out to visit with them and to talk with them and to fellowship with them. And she said, well, I think it's just wonderful myself. She said, look at all this food that we was given. And I said, yeah. She said, what I want to know is, <laughs> how often do you go visiting? <laughs> And I said, well, I said, I don't know. I said, it'd be just every now and then. And she said, do they do this every time? I said, well, I don't know. I didn't know they were going to do it this time. And she said, well, I just think it's wonderful. She said, if you, if you go like just once a month, she said, we'd have enough to keep us going with that, <laughs> without ever having to buy <laughs> A, a lick of food and I said well I said that's pretty true and she said now what in all of that stuff we got what do you think we ought to eat first and I said well we were given several chickens I said so why don't we have a fried chicken dinner and take some of them fresh potatoes out of the uh, out of the ground and and uh, have some fried potatoes and and she said, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, yes, I tell you, it's just amazing to me. I had no idea that people would do that. She said, uh, I tell you, she said, I think this visitation thing's a good thing. <laughs> she, she, she had never been, she had never been around anything like that. She had never seen anything like that. And I just thought that it was, uh, I just thought that it was amazing uh, how it just really tickled her to no end about all the good stuff that the people were so kind to give to us when we went visiting. 
I do remember when I was a kid that I went with my mother and dad out one time and we were visiting some of the farms there in Texas and uh, uh, and I remember we went up to one door and those people's names were Styles, And so we visited with them. I guess they visited for about 30 minutes, you know. And, and then uh, my mother and dad came out of the house and they said, well, wait just a minute. And so they came out of the house with a box full of, of stuff for my mother and dad. And, of course, that was the first time I'd ever seen that. I was just about 12 years old. And uh, and so my my dad said, well, thank you ever so much. And so she said, well, I know that's the only reason you come out here. And I heard that, and I thought, what? And so anyway, when we got in the car, I said to my dad, I said, is that the reason we go visiting, so you can get stuff? And he said, no, son. No, it isn't. And he said, but uh, we'll not be back here to visit again because that lady felt like that it was uh, an expected thing and uh, she had the wrong idea about it and, and the wrong attitude about it. And so that was the last time that I'd ever gone with them to go visiting. Well, then, of course, Years later, when I met my real grandmother, then I, that never dawned on me. I never even thought about that uh, about back when I was a kid. And so uh, we, uh, when that church uh, grew to be over 100 in just a few months, uh, I'd, I thought it would be good to go out and be, do, to have a personal touch with the different people that were coming and so uh, we I stayed there at that church for about three years and the church went from that 15 people all the way up to about 300 in that in that three-year period and, uh, and and then I went to him one day and I said listen I'm not a pastor I'm an evangelist and you need to get a pastor in here and so they they put out feelers that they were looking for a pastor. And, uh, and within just a couple of months, they found a pastor. And so then I was relieved of, of having to go uh, over there and, and, and help them people. I didn't mind helping them people, but I wasn't a pastor. I was, I'm an evangelist. And God didn't call me to pastor. He called me to be an evangelist. And so uh, uh, I, never, I never did forget, never would forget about my grandmother just having the time of her life. She was in there like a kid with, with new toys. Couldn't figure out which one she wanted to play with first when all that food was put on that table. Well, Everybody's doing VRs about this and about that and about a lot of things that I just can't do. I just can't do. Uh, uh, somebody did a v, wanted a VR done about th three different pipes. And, and uh, uh, what your favorite pipe was, what the pipe was that you most went for the one that surprised you the most and stuff like that. Every pipe I get surprises me. And every pipe that I get is my favorite pipe. The one that I'm smoking is my favorite pipe. So if I smoke it and put it down and get another one, that's my favorite pipe. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't do that. And then Boca Raton wanted you to do a, a, uh, a VR, but uh, I'm, I, that's not my makeup. I just, I just can't, I, I'm not good at that. But I did want to tell Boca Raton, tell Charlie, 
I am so proud of you for having 500 subs. You certainly deserve those subs because you are so kind and you are so gracious on your videos. And I just think that it's wonderful how people are supporting you. And I hope that you get many, many more subs because the more subs you get, the more people get to see the kindness that you bestow upon your in your videos. So I just wanted to say congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. So that's about it on this one. I'm going to go now. And uh, uh, I pray that the good Lord watch over you and take care of you. I pray, pray he'll supply you every need. And until then, light up a pipe. Enjoy that pipe and make the one you're smoking your favorite pipe while you're smoking it, okay? All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.